Let's get good. All right, guys, this morning we're going to be doing a quick tutorial just to show you how to install the mod pack for Fire Pro Wrestling. Uh, so what I've done here is I've loaded up all the pages we need. I'm going to put links to all of these pages down in the description. So all you have to do is click the links down there to follow along. Uh, that being said, 7-Zip, that's, that's our step one for this. It's not required. If you know enough about unzipping files and stuff to be able to do it on your own, you don't need 7-Zip. I just prefer 7-Zip because it gives us a right-click context menu option that we'll use later. So I recommend getting it, plus it's free, so like it doesn't hurt anything, and it allows you to unzip .7z files as well, which are kind of more common now anyway. Uh, so what we're going to do is you're going to look and determine what type of system you have. The reality is, if you've got a system that's not like 10 years old, it's probably not 32-bit, it's probably 64-bit. Uh, this tutorial is for Windows, by the way, like I can't necessarily help if you're on Linux, that's a little bit more complicated. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go go ahead and grab the 64-bit version of 7-Zip right there. Sorry guys, it's early and I have not had coffee, so you're gonna have to bear with me. And I'm just gonna save that to my desktop for right now. Uh, and once that finishes, you'll see down here, if you're in Chrome, you'll see it down here. If not, you may not get a context window. I use Chrome, so I don't know what to tell you if you're using something else. But you don't need that anyway. You can just go straight to your desktop. You can double-click the file and run it. It's going to tell you it wants to put it in C program file 7 zip, that's fine, we're just going to let it do what it wants to do. Uh, it's going to want us to restart to do this, we're obviously not going to do that right now. Uh, going to go ahead and close that, come back in here, and go to PWGR's website. Now here we're going to be picking up the actual patcher, and we get that by going to their page, going to installation, and then clicking this download button right here. Uh, so I'm going to put that in my Fire Pro World folder. I actually have a shortcut to get us there pretty quickly. I'm going to go ahead and save that. Yeah, I want to replace the one that's already in there. Uh, so that's going to go ahead and download. You won't have to replace it unless you already had it. And if you already have it, you don't necessarily need to do this either. Like, this isn't a step that you have to do every time. This is a step you do once. And when we get there, I'll explain the steps that you do want to do every time whenever there's an update. Uh, so the next thing we're going to do is jump over here to the Mod Pack Testing Ground Discord. Now there are two different versions you can pick up here, and this is very important as far as distinctions go. There is a release version, this is the last stable version that Carl has pushed out. If you're using the release version, you're usually going to be pretty okay. Most of the time there's not any bad bugs in there, Carl's tested it, it's, it's stable. If you're using the test version, which is what I'm usually doing, you get a lot of new features and functionality, however the catch to that is, sometimes you get some bugs with it. Now, if you get bugs, uh, and you're using the test version, there is a process which you can find down here in Mod Bug Reports. There's a pin, I believe. Uh, okay, I thought there was a... yeah, there is a pin right here. So if you follow the directions on this link in the pin, it'll tell you how to submit errors to the Mod Bug Reports channel. If you're not on the latest test version, do not submit stuff. Just don't. The reality is if you're not on the latest test version, you're either on an old version or you're on the stable version, and the thing that you're reporting has probably already been reported and fixed. Uh, so that's, that's sort of just to save Carl some time because he is very busy, and it does take a lot of time for him to field stuff when people submit things that are like already fixed or aren't actually a bug. Uh, and sometimes it's hard to tell when something is an issue with your system or an issue with the mod pack, which is what these log files that we want actually tell Carl. That being said, I'm also going to put a link to Carl's Patreon down in the description of this video. If you enjoy the mods as much as I do, consider throwing some money Carl's way. Uh, that is something that we do on the channel, is we, we Patreon Carl because I, I guess it'd be patronized, but not, not in like the... Let, let's move on. You get what I mean. We are members of Carl's Patreon because the mod pack is awesome and it helps in a lot of ways for the shows that I run. Uh, anyways, so we're going to hop over here to the test version. We're going to click the pin and go straight to this. This is the Google Drive thing. I'm going to go ahead and click it. It's going to pop this open. You're going to see mod pack test version up here. You're going to want to click this download button right here. Ignore the file list that comes up. That's not something you want to mess with. You just want to go ahead and download. Come on. You can do it, Chrome. 
Uh, and we're going to save that directly to our Fire Pro Wrestling World folder, and I'm actually going to overwrite my old test version. Okay, so once that's done, all we have to do is go into our Fire Pro World folder. There is a lot of stuff in here you can basically ignore. This is my folder. There's all sorts of things in here. Don't worry about that. Uh, since we've got 7-Zip installed, the next part of this process is going to be very, very easy. All we do is we click on PWE that PWGR Patcher. We right-click that, we go to 7Z, and we go Extract Here. It's going to ask you some things potentially. If it does ask you this, it's because you've done this before. Uh, so just go ahead and click Yes to All, so it'll replace everything with the new stuff. And then we go to Mod Pack Test Version, and we go ahead and 7-Zip again, Extract Here, Yes to All. I'm going to go ahead and make some replacements there. Now the last step to get all the mods up and running is we go ahead and run PWGR Patcher here. It's going to pop up this little window. Uh, there are all sorts of things in here that you can click on and off. I actually have some you probably won't have. Uh, for example, you will not likely have the No Control DLL right here. So I'm going to actually go ahead and shut that one off because we don't need to talk about that one expressly. Uh, Mass Delete is another one you probably won't have. That one is not technically supported by Carl, so I don't recommend using it unless you're willing to troubleshoot your own problems. Uh, same with Ace, that one's not supported anymore either. The green screen is under the not supported, but I've never had issues with it, so it's definitely something to look at if you're interested in just cropping out your wrestlers. Uh, okay, so we're going to go to modpack.dll right here. This is important right here. Make sure to set the resolution you want for your monitor. Mine is 1920 by 1080. Uh, and this is the mod pack DLL. We need to make sure that this checkbox is turned on. And then once we've done that, we can come over here and there's all these different things that the mod pack can do. So what I'm gonna do, because I have a little bit of time left for this, is we're gonna go through these pretty quickly and briskly. Uh, extended move list is one that you do not want to turn on necessarily unless you know what you're doing. And I say that because once you turn on the extended move list, there's some things it does to affect what moves can finish matches. So if you turn it on and you don't actually take the time to go through and work with it, but you dabble with it a little bit, it can give you some really weird results. So maybe leave that one off your first run through until you get a little more comfortable. Uh, the new move importer is what you use to import custom moves. MOTW is sort of the mod packs version of fire promoter it's honestly a more robust mode than fire promoter actually is in a lot of ways edit share allows you to import and export wrestlers outside of the steam workshop system uh, i find that to be incredibly useful one of the issues i had early on and this isn't a regular issue but i'm just going to throw this out there because it's something that sometimes you might run into is that the way that the mod pack and that the workshop interact with edits is sometimes different so I actually have a separate save where I pull down all my workshop edits and then I export them as files and import them into like a clean save that I use that doesn't have any workshop connections. But that's just me and I do that for stability. You don't have to do that. It actually integrates just fine with the workshop. And I think the only reason I had an issue was because at the time I was using Mass Delete, which as I've already mentioned, is an unsupported mod. Uh, variable Tree of Woe attacks allows the AI to use multiple different strikes during Tree of Woe. That's just a nice little thing you can pretty much always turn on. Bloodstains is pretty great. Uh, makes them permanent and increases the number of available decals. Uh, so what you can... Just because you turn it on in here doesn't mean it's turned on in game. I want to go be clear about that, rather. So Bloodstains being on right here doesn't mean that they're always going to be permanent. That's something I can switch on when I get into the mod pack, but do I want that option? And the answer is yes, so I have this turned on. Uh, so longer names here. Like it says, allows for longer names, skipping the intro video. A lot of these are pretty self-explanatory. Freecam is the cool camera that you guys see in a lot of my videos and then ask how you do that. That's how you do it. Uh, it is a lot of work and I'll probably potentially do a tutorial for it later, but if I don't, there is a tutorial on Carl's uh, YouTube channel, I believe, on how to do the Freecam setup. And that's really all it is. It's a lot of tweaking and testing to make sure you get the right things that you want. Mod pack framework absolutely required. If this is not on, it will not work. You gotta turn that on. And these are on if they have the checkbox in them. I may have said that already, and that may seem a little like over the top to say, but a lot of people aren't super computer savvy, and that's kind of who this is for. So definitely make sure that all these checkboxes are on for the mods that you want. Match setting control. 
Uh, this allows you to modify sort of the speed and the CPU level after the match has started. You do have to be careful with that one though because it's done by keyboard keys and if you accidentally bump one, it can actually affect it. Like for me, if I'm recording a match and I bump the match speed, uh, that creates some very obvious problems, right? So. The one thing this does do that's very, very helpful and powerful if you're a video creator like I am is that it allows you to select characters after the match has started. That means taking control of different edits after the match has started if you're trying to get a certain ending to happen or something like that. So that's a very, very useful feature, but do be careful with the keyboard because you can mess things up if you're recording. Okay, Arena Texture Database. So this is what actually allows us to do our own custom arena textures, which basically is how I created the uh, GFW Pulse and GFW Mayhem arenas. If you haven't checked out our show on the YouTube channel, you should definitely give it a look. Very cool stuff and very cool examples of how the mod pack can be used, in my opinion. Uh, Yurok and Hall entrances. This actually allows for very short entrances in the Yurok and Hall arena. The reason I have this turned off is because I used to use Aces 2.0 DLL for uh, entrance taunts. The problem was that it didn't interact well with Yurok and Hall. I'm not sure if the entrance taunts that are part of the mod pack now actually work with Yurok and Hall. So whether you want to leave that on or off is up to you. You can always test it. And here's the thing. If you test something in here and you find that it doesn't work for you or you don't like the way that it's working, all you have to do is run the patcher again, come in here and toggle it off like this is right here, and then click Patch Fire Pro World. But we'll get to that. Uh, custom edit parts allows the use of custom edit parts like that's pretty self-explanatory There's more to it, but I'm gonna show you guys how to get to the documentation will, which will explain more of that stuff uh, So match pacing and booking options allows players control over match pacing This is actually super useful guys It allows you to sort of define what damage level wrestlers start at which means that you'll start to see medium moves Right at the start of the match or big moves right at the start of the match but more importantly, what it helps you do, in my opinion, is it helps you to sort of better control the length of matches if you're doing a recorded show. Uh, the other thing it also allows you to do is select who can win. And that's actually really big if you're booking a more story-based show and you want to make sure that the outcomes are what you're expecting. Uh, tag Team Overhaul will have better logic, displays tag team names in the title history menus. Team name will also display in nameplates during entrances if the arena texture database is also enabled exactly what it says. Most of these you're just going to want on. Wrestler specific move renaming. This is cool because it allows you to rename moves just for each wrestler on your roster. Uh, very, very useful. Real Royal Rumbles. There's some setup involved, but this is what allows you to do the actual Royal Rumble style Battle Royals, and it's quite awesome, so you should definitely have that one on. Random match background music. This is something where you can put in your own background music and it'll randomly pull from that folder. I don't use it because uh, I don't actually use background music since I'm recording the show. I usually have like a sound bed of crowd noise that I, I put in or whatnot. Title match intro. This will actually replace the fight graphic with like a graphic of the belt that they're defending or whatever. So it's a very useful tool. I don't use it because I don't have any of those fight graphics because for me, I'm trying to get more of a... Uh, a television show quality thing going on so like I don't have a bunch of the UI off I have as much of the UI off as I can uh, save selection is huge this is absolutely huge you want this on it'll allow you to choose from multiple saves which is really useful uh, extended special skills I haven't actually played with but it does exactly what it sounds like it adds in a lot more special skills so that you can select different stuff than just a uh, fast start or Start Dash, I think it's called, or Strike Back. I forget the names of them, honestly. Like, it's one of those things where when I'm working with edits, I reference uh, King Mo's Tumblr, and that's what I'm paying attention to those. Alphabetized Refs does exactly what it sounds like. The Interview Integrator is how I do a lot of the interviews you might see on the GFW shows. Uh, Crowd Chance is awesome. Crowd Chance is awesome. It allows you to use MP3 files for Crowd Chance during your matches, which is great. Uh, throw Out Logic is really cool. It adds in a Throw Out Logic slider, so to speak, in its own little panel, which is something the game in and of itself is missing. Entrance Attires does what it sounds like. Light Tube Regeneration does what it sounds like. Uh, there is the Easy Sound Replacement. This is how we have the new sounds that we have on the show recently, where everything sounds more crisp, like the chops actually sound like really crisp, crisp chops. Sorry guys, I swear I English. Rivals and referees. This actually allows you to control interference as well as setting up rivalries and stuff like that, which is very, very useful. I use it primarily for controlling interference. Highly recommend it. 
The intro builder will allow you to use some of the announcer files from other wrestling games to announce your wrestlers as they come in, which is super great. Uh, unlock all. This is important if you don't want to go through mission mode. Mission mode doesn't function quite precisely well with the mod pack, so what you want to do is definitely turn this on so that you get all the things that you unlock during mission mode. Uh, the sweat mod I have turned off because I have problems with it for some reason, but what it does is it subtly increases the shininess of the wrestlers as the match goes on so it looks like they've actually been sweating. Fire Promoter options does all sorts of fun things with Fire Promoter, no match evaluation display. This gets rid of the percentage which is replaced with a star system which I like better anyway so that's what we use it for. Uh, repackaged wrestlers allows for quick renames of all the installed edits on your roster. Easy Theme allows you to click a button to sync up the music themes of all your wrestlers with correctly named files within a certain folder in the mod pack, or actually within the uh, BGM folder in, you know, right here. <laughs> uh, reversal Editor does what it sounds like, that's a very... I'm actually... I guess we have time to finish this up real quick. Uh, alphabetize Rings allows you to alphabetize the rings when you load it up, that's great. The ring announcer mod is sort of not compatible with intro builder, but it does a similar thing, so you kind of want to keep that off unless you're not going to use the intro builder. I think a lot of people right now are switching to intro builder, so they've got ring announcer off, so that's probably a good idea to just do. Uh, seconds interfere. This is actually really cool. It basically makes it so that if somebody gets dumped to the outside and there's a second out there, they will actually interfere in the match like you'd expect them to, at least if they're heels. Uh, that is, of course, based on your second interference logic edit or edit logic. Title history allows you to make changes to your title histories. This is actually super useful if you have like a match go the wrong way when you're trying to sim something for a video or something. You can just go back and kind of fix things. It's it's very, very useful. Manager entrances will just have managers enter with their clients instead of having a separate entrance. That's just kind of a nice feature in my opinion. Automatic save backup is good. It just makes sure that there is a backup made every time you launch the save. No UI turns off all the UI elements, that's something I already explained earlier. No fight graphics, same deal. Better Wrestler Organization is an alternate way to sort edits. Uh, basically what that one will allow you to do is sort of go in and, and resort edits within the mod pack. Uh, it's a little bit more convenient because sometimes, you know, you add a mod or an edit in or something and they're not in alphabetical order and that's kind of a pain. There's also a feature that's been added recently that I haven't played with much where you can hit like, I can't remember the key combination, but I'm sure it's in the documentation, to go ahead and pull up like a search thing and actually search through anything that has a list of edits, which is really, really helpful. Variable strike exchange lengths does exactly what it sounds like. Instead of strike exchanges being three shots back and forth and then one of the guys eats it and the other one potentially hits a comeback strike, this one will make it so that those vary in length which in my opinion is a huge, huge benefit because like otherwise it just becomes very static and you're like, why do I have this turned on? Like I've seen this a million times now. It's a lot better when they'll have like a one or two strike exchange and then they'll go on for like a seven one the next time. Uh, and weapon collision is awesome. It makes it so that the sound effect of weapon hits and stuff like that plays when somebody hits a move on top of a weapon as well as applying extra damage and all that kinds of stuff, which is just mm, 100, so we do that one. Uh, once we have all the ones we want turned on with these checkboxes, we just go ahead and click Patch Fire Pro World. This is going to do some stuff in the background. If this disappears and you see that 2.0.0.0 Squirm Lib in the background, it means that it did everything right. Now we're just going to go ahead and launch the game. Uh, one thing I will say, the mod pack windows, they load up kind of slowly sometimes. And one of the things that I found helps if you're on Windows is if you have the Task Manager open when you go to load it, it'll actually load a lot faster. So this is the, the Windows for the mod pack they're loading up right now. It'll sit like this for a second, it's okay, you don't really want to mess with anything, you just want to be patient, and bam, there we go. That happened as quickly as it did, mainly because I had the Task Manager open. If I don't have the Task Manager open, it doesn't happen that quickly. Uh, so now we have the actual mod pack interface. I'm going to show you the main panel real quick just to kind of 
illustrate what I meant by some of the stuff we were talking about. The carryover uh, bloodstains toggle right here is the one I was talking about when we were looking at the bloodstains in the actual patcher. So there's all sorts of options in here, all sorts of things you can play with, and I could do tutorials for days on what all of these things do. Uh, we're not going to go into that too much. What I am going to do is come over here and launch the game so you can see that everything is copacetic and works. Uh, sure, let's go ahead and just turn on... Okay, just checking my sound there for a minute. I'm going to set this to CP, and we're just going to turn on a match here real quick so you guys can see that everything is working and everything is fine. Uh, I actually... Yeah, let's, let's turn this on. I'm only going to let it play for a second, and I'll probably skip the entrances. Uh, but you will get to see a custom arena, so that's cool. This is for MOTW right here. You can do what you want with that. This is the entrance attire mod right here. I'm selecting the entrance attires that I want people to use. Okay, gonna skip over that. But yeah, this is a custom arena. And also, if I, if I press keys on the keyboard, I can switch to the different cameras we're using and stuff. So just an idea of some of the cool stuff you can do with the mod pack there. All right, I'm going to quit out after that. I want to show you guys where to find the documentation before we end the tutorial. And I also want to show you how you would update if there was a new version of the mod pack out. So that that's easy, because a lot of people get confused when they get to that part. So when you unzipped the mod pack here, you will have gotten a file that says support the mod pack. This is what you can use to go to the Patreon and throw a little change Carl's way for the great work that he does. There's also a link to the Discord, and there's this thing right here called the documentation. So you can go ahead and open the documentation right there, and bam, this is an actual linked menu that you can jump to different stuff that will explain how the mod pack works. Uh, some of this stuff could be gone into in more depth. You can always ask questions on Carl's Discord. In fact, I highly recommend it. But there are some great things in here if you're just trying to figure out how the actual interface for the mod pack works. Definitely come through here and check this out. Especially if you're like me and you get embarrassed asking questions sometimes. And as you can see, there's like a ton of people in here right now looking at this. So you're not alone. Everybody's kind of doing that thing. So if we wanted to update to a new version of the mod pack, here's what we would do. We would come to test uploads more than likely, we'd go to the pin message, do the same thing we did before. I'm gonna close that so that we actually get it. Come on, load, there we go. Same thing we did before. We're gonna get the mod pack test version right here. We're gonna go ahead and download. Someday, someday never comes. Okay. I'm gonna click over the mod pack test version that we got before. Yeah, I want to replace it. Cool, now it's down. All I have to do from this point on, go to the mod pack test version, go to 7-zip, extract here, yes to all. And then we run PWGR patcher one more time. And we go in and say, oh, okay, all my, you'll notice that all your options that you used before are turned on. But if there's a new option, you might want to come through here and click it. And then once you've done that, you just go patch and you should be all up to date. And I'm gonna go ahead and launch it just to show you guys that it does launch just like it did before. You can do it, Windows. Uh, this is, don't get worried if it takes a second once again, cause that's just the uh, mod pack loading in general. I think I'm getting a little bit of a slowdown too cause I'm running my recording at this time, but that's, that's whatever. <laughs> Usually I've got all this stuff open before I even start recording. So yeah, there we go. We launched, everything worked great, no problems. Uh, I can actually show you MOTW. There's some setup involved with MOTW, but we're not going to go into it in depth. I'm just going to show you the, the menu and sort of what kinds of stuff you can do with it. You can actually book out cards here, it'll store your results. There's all sorts of cool things this does, and now there's actual graphs and stuff that go through the history. I'm not sure how to use those. Those just got added in recently. Uh, anyways, my point is, it's not that hard, guys. If you want to mess around with the mod pack, you want to try stuff out, that is all you need to do step by step in roughly 30 minutes. And that's also how to update it. I will say one thing that you want to be careful about. If, uh, if you go ahead and update because a new a new patch comes out or something like that from the main uh, game like like when the stardom DLC comes out this is a good example when the stardom DLC comes out if you're using the mod pack do not launch the game while you're in online mode on Steam 
If you do, it will bork your game. It'll bork your game until Carl gets a chance to go around and uh, update the mod pack. So when a new DLC or something like that comes out, switch Steam to offline mode before you launch, and that will protect your game and make sure that you don't run into any issues. Even if you do launch it, like it won't bork up your save permanently or anything, it'll just not work, and then you'll have to wait for the mod pack to come out and you won't really be able to uh, play and stuff because you'll already have updated the base game code when there isn't necessarily an update for the mod pack yet. So basically when new official content comes out, switch Steam to offline mode until you get the newest version of the mod pack and know that it is supported. Thank you guys for watching, I hope this tutorial helped you. If it didn't, or if I didn't go over anything clearly enough, or if you just have questions, go ahead and leave them down in the comments. If the video helped you, go ahead and leave a like, maybe subscribe to the channel, maybe check out GFW, it's pretty cool. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you did, make sure to go ahead and give us a like or subscribe to the channel and we will see you next time. Bye.